Hello, welcome to the Thursday, June 16th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick post today on the Storm Center website uh, by Dustin Lee, one of our sands.edu undergraduate interns. And it's actually just a quick uh, video presentation about how to set up a honeypot for the shield using various cloud providers. So if you thought about doing that, well, uh, take a look at Dustin's presentation. Thanks to Jason for pointing me to a vulnerability that SonarSource discovered in Simpra email. Now, this is a competitor to Hort uh, email, which uh, we, I think, covered a vulnerability in last week. It's one of those webmail sort of exchange-like uh, systems, but open source. The problem here is that Simpra uses a proxy Nginx in order to direct users to different backends and then to consistently forward particular users to particular backends. It maintains a memcache a database that links user accounts to particular endpoints. Now, this is all good so far, but the problem is that it's possible to inject records into the memcache database because they're not correctly filtering carriage return line feeds. And with that, that hacker can essentially inject a particular record that would direct a specific user to a backend that's actually not a backend, but instead the attacker's server, which will then receive all requests from the user, including including username and password. Pretty neat little vulnerability, certainly something that you need to address, but also something that you, if you're not running Simpra, should just read the report to see what can go wrong uh, with memcached here in particular. And with that, IO, the cloud security company that found a number of interesting vulnerabilities, in particular in Azure in the past, uh, has a new a GitHub project. They're calling it the Cloud Middleware Dataset. This is uh, if you are uh, running a virtual machine within a cloud provider, you're typically not getting like a default install of Linux or Windows or whatever operating system you are using. Instead, there will be additional software that these cloud providers pre-install on your system for management purposes. And uh, this GitHub project is intended to enumerate that software. So if there are any vulnerabilities, for example, you will be able to identify that you're running the software and hopefully patch it or maybe uninstall it if you're inclined to do so. And one of the vulnerabilities I mentioned as interesting in Microsoft's update yesterday was the Windows Network File System or Windows NFS vulnerability, CVE 2022-26937. I mentioned we haven't really seen any exploits for any of these recent vulnerabilities. The Zero Day Initiative now published a blog post with more technical details regarding the vulnerability. No proof of concept or anything like this, but quite a bit of detail that may make it easier for an attacker to actually weaponize this vulnerability. But again, haven't really seen an exploit yet. And if you know of one, then please let me know. Now talking about vulnerabilities that we have seen exploited in the past, uh, Citrix ADM, the application delivery management for uh, Citrix uh, has had vulnerabilities in the past that were widely exploited. The latest vulnerability patched this week, uh, actually two vulnerabilities, CVE 2022-27511 and 27512 allow an attacker without authentication to reset uh, the administrator password. This would become effective on the next reboot. So the attacker has to be a little bit patient here for the system to reboot. But then, of course, they would be able to gain access as an administrator if you are actually exposing the ADM IP address and well, uh, Citrix recommends and I recommend that you do not do this. And yes, patches are available. 
But if you have one of the Nexans FTTO Giga Switch series switches, which are often sort of used in industrial environments, uh, utilities and such, then you don't even need to reset a password because the root password of these devices is fixed. And Sec Consult has an advisory with this vulnerability and a number of additional vulnerabilities, which are pretty much uh, outdated software components that are installed on these switches. The SSH server listens on port 50,200 as well as 50,201. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Remember, you can also listen to this via Alexa. If it doesn't work via the flash briefing, let me know or let me know if anything else doesn't work. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.